Hey, hi. So let's understand why we need correlation ID in microservice. In microservice, why correlation ID is so, so much important. So we have multiple microservices running. Let's take an example of Flipkart or Amazon, a kind of like buyer, seller, warehouse. Then we have government accession slabs, like in something GHT will be 5% and something it will be like 20% and so on and so forth okay so what happened is like as a buyer i request in amazon okay i want to buy this milton thermoset still okay so the seller it will go to the seller and check okay which seller is selling it then the seller will contact its warehouse whether that is present or not how many stocks are available simply i can't put five orders and if two stocks are there then it will throw error and then it will connect with the government taxation slabs and then it will calculate the tax and show me the proper result right so there are multiple steps multiple dvs are attached anything can go wrong anywhere and it's not like that always uh, every steps will fail okay so so for like we in a day amazon is maybe receiving like few millions records or few million transactions so each transaction and every transaction may not fail only like 10 or 20 transactions may have got failed so money may be debited from my account and the seller might not have received it so it may go wrong in any place so how can you track it so we have multiple systems so here i am taking buyer seller warehouse and taxation system so you can consider any system which is out of amazon like taxation system or it can be anything like we have cc avenue like where the payment gateway occurs so it can also be a different path or different ball game which we don't want to touch but we need to get the response from that server right so how do we proceed so we create a correlation id this is a kind of transaction id you can say and it is randomly generated we nowadays we generally use uuid2 like 16 or 20 alpha alpha numeric string it will give me then i pass it in the header section okay so i can either pass it in the header section or in the body itself so if it is a post we can pass it in the body but in general we prefer to pass it in the header section as a correlation id or transaction id and then it propagates to the all system and suppose i want to know okay my seller we was trying to buy milton thermo still it got failed and so let's find out so we can search using various ways so let's see so here we have like transaction transaction three and it was from so i have loaded it from buyers.json so let me show you how this looks like so i have buyers.json where I have transaction one, transaction two, then I have seller store JSON. Transaction one, transaction two, then we have transaction three. Okay, then we have here tax calculation or tax calculator and warehouse. Okay, so the error was thrown for one of the transaction, transaction three, and warehouse and in all other system it was propagated easily and there was no failure but the buyer has seen transaction 3 for him failed so how can he propagate it so suppose here i have transaction 3 let me load the other three files so the source you can consider as a uh, this is coming from the file as of now but in general it will come from the directly from the server it will be a splunk forwarder which will forward it here so for demo purpose i am just showing it from the file system okay and it will look more in a formatted way like it's not actually say a string now it will be more in a json format i'm not able to pull it using file system so let's load the other one
oops didn't get loaded then this is due to the timestamp json structure json no timestamp yeah okay start searching okay seller so this is from the seller server you can say let's load taxation and data warehouse tax calculator nothing is loaded structured So what X calculator server has pushed its logs. Now let's see the other one warehouse red JSON. And it will be let's see what it shows. It doesn't show anything. CSV no just a no timestamp. Well right, let's now start searching. okay so the seller actually has reported a problem the seller can be anyone like your upstream so for seller who is a downstream buyer is a downstream and for buyer seller is the upstream and warehouse and taxation is the downstream and for taxation and the warehouse seller is the upstream and there is no downstream they are only calculating it processing it and providing the data to the upstreams okay so so let's now remove this source so first and foremost what you can do is like you can directly filter using log level so we will put log level as error and this also helps in formation of the dashboards and alerts like you can promptly act on how many failed records so suppose your warehouse server is down for two hours and you don't know how you will know because your seller will try to contact and it will fail you can have health check there and even from the seller side also you can promptly get and deliver them before they say that okay my servers are i'm getting 500 error from your warehouse server before that you can say that we are in a maintenance phase and we will revert you back within an one hour with the update if we are able to resolve the issue so let's add to search here it will be error okay so now we have log level error so here you can see there are different logs like transaction 3 transaction 3 so how you will know like where it failed so the last one will be here by timestamp since i have imported it so the timestamp will be different but in general since you will be logging it it will log in a sequential manner so what happened is like seller buyer will contact seller then seller will contact warehouse tax system then again buyer will print like it received the response then seller will print sorry seller will print it received the response then again the last buyer who has first called it he has now received the response from the seller that 500 or some error occurred and then he will print it so you can find the buyer's print at the top ordered by timestamp and then you can just filter out the transaction id which is actually the correlation id so now your correlation using the correlation id you can say that the warehouse actually null pointer exception came so let's find out so there will be a error stack so you can find out like which file has thrown the error since this one was written by me so it is not having all the proper data uh, this video is mainly about what is the use of correlation id or why correlation id is required in microservice so you get a null pointer exception then we say that okay the error is not from the buyer side error is not from the seller side error is not on the taxation system error is from the warehouse server so we go and tell the warehouse who will be maintaining it either the developer or the team will tell them okay your server is throwing error 
please resolve this and this many request please try to reprocess it because the amount has already been deducted so this is the main use case of correlation id if you have any doubt then do let me know in the comment section i'll be happy to help you with any queries and if you like this video then don't forget to give a thumbs up and if you love this then the sub would be incredible thank you see you again in the next one bye bye